Hi folks! Today we're going to learn how to write a haiku. Um, a haiku, as you probably know, is a Japanese form of poetry. It's old, it's ancient, and it's um, generally 17 syllables broken into three lines. Five syllables on the first line, seven on the second, and five on the third. Um, whether your teacher is going to require you to be exact on those syllables or not, you could ask because some teachers are less strict on that. Because what's important, I think, in a haiku is the imagery. And even more specifically than the imagery is the, the tradition of haiku is that they contrast two images, that that tiny little poem contains two images that somehow contrast each other and make an interesting little picture. Um, the key with haiku is that you get the um, sensory images in there. And by that, I mean, well, let's mark them here again. The key one that you can't live without are the sights. You, we have to be able to see this. We have to see this scene. You, you, you don't want to just say, oh, I'm happy. That doesn't show us anything. We want to see, you know, a kid leaping for happiness or something. Show us the sight. Sounds are really good ones to have in there, too. They just really work well in haiku. If you can throw a sound, a dinging of a bell, or whatever is appropriate, sound is great to have in a haiku. And uh, lastly, I would say the third most important one is feels. And by feels, what we mean is, is it hot or cold? Are you chapped? Is the wind blowing? Are you sticky? Is it sea salty air? Are you sticky? What does it feel like? Those are the biggies for haiku. If you can get smell and taste in there, bravo to you, because those are hard to get in there. But And they're not as essential. Just make sure you get sights in there and try to get sounds and feels too. Uh, let's look at these examples. These came from Wikipedia. Haiku in English. Great place for haiku. Uh, anyway, okay, let's look at this first one. Snow in my shoe. Abandoned sparrow's nest. Okay, well, first of all, that doesn't fit the syllables. Snow in my shoe. Four syllables. Abandoned. Three. We're way off on the syllables. But what is there, and I would say this really makes it a haiku, is you've got the two images that contrast each other. You've got the snow in my shoe, and you've got the abandoned bird's nest. Those are different and weird things. So why is that even a poem? What is lovely about that? Why is that even lovely? I don't even know if it has to be lovely. It just has to be kind of cool, like a photograph. Snow in my shoe. That, if you take the, the time to really think about it, that's a ah, uncomfortable, cold image. Snow in my shoe. Ah, ooh, that's cold. It's winter. The person's walking in shoes. Probably the wrong shoes for winter. A boot. Snow wouldn't really get in your boots. So snow in my shoe so somebody's walking and they see an abandoned sparrow's nest that's a bird a bird's nest gosh it's winter birds are born in spring you have to go through spring then summer then fall then winter we're talking a whole three quarters of the year ago that 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 nest has been um, abandoned for a long time and it's just kind of an interesting cold cold feeling to the sad I don't know maybe it's cold in addition to the snow being in her shoe physically, there's a cold sadness to an abandoned nest. I don't know, it makes me think that. Anyway, I like that the haiku is making me think with their two contrasting images. I like that. Let's look at the second one. An aging willow, its image unsteady in the flowing stream. Okay, a willow is a tree, an aging willow. I get a picture in my mind, I'm getting the visual, the, the sight imagery is there, an aging willow, it's really solidly established, I get the feeling it's kind of gnarled, a willow usually has like drooping branches, you could google it and see what it looks like, google image. And then the second line, it's image unsteady, for a second I'm thinking, is it going to fall because it's old, but then I get the understanding in the third line with the flowing stream, so the willow image is unsteady in the stream. That's really pretty. That's a really pretty image. And um, and I like it. And you've got the two things, the willow and the stream, right? Those are the two contrasting images. And you get movement and you get a little bit of sound with the flowing stream. The word flowing makes it, there's a sound implied in there. So you get visual and then you get the sound and the more visual. So that's another haiku. I like that one. Let's look at this one up here. White caps on the bay, a broken signboard banging in the April wind. 
Okay, let's look at that then. White caps on the bay. Well, first let's see if we see the two things. White caps on the bay is one. That's the waves, as they peak up, the wind takes them and makes them white, right? The way the wind hits the waves and breaks it into foam. So it's a windy day on the bay. That's image number one. And image number two is the signboard banging. And that, you get the sound of it and you get more of the wind and it's broken. You get a clear visual on that. It's sort of a lonely, empty feeling. Um, so you've got the two images, the white caps on the bay and the broken signboard banging. I really like that one. It's just, it's just, I, I don't know, I get even a feeling of New England or, I don't know, where does it, what does it make you think of? White caps on the bay and the signboard banging, it kind of makes me feel like that's an abandoned place, lonely, there's a hollowness, there's a sadness, I don't know. I think what's cool about this kind of poetry is it gets you to think for yourself. What does it make you think of? It gives you a feeling. All right, let's look at the last one. Meteor shower. A gentle wave wets our sandals. Okay, so you've got the two things, right? The meteor shower and the wave wetting our sandals. Man, look at that. You're all the way at the top of the sky looking up at the meteor shower. You're dark at night looking at shooting stars. And then you go all the way down to your feet to the wetting our sandals with a gentle wave. Gentle wave. I get a sound there with a you know the sound of little gentle waves breaking and then the feel of the wet on our feet and it's an hour so it's two people it's at least two people that's lovely you've got the dark night and two people standing there looking at the shooting stars as wave waves lap over their feet gently I love that that's really nice can you do that can you do that okay give it a try two images the poem needs to be tight. Personally, uh, Miss Till does not care too, too much about syllables. Give it a try, but more than that, I care about your imagery. Two images juxtaposed, all right? And my next uh, posted video lesson will be on how to tighten it up and make it really, really strong. All right, good luck. Let's see what you can do.